Shalom, shalom. This is Ashira Malka. I want to give all glory, honor, worship, and praise to Yahweh, the Father and Creator of the universe, His Son and my salvation, Yahushua HaMashiach, the Messiah, and the Holy Spirit, also known as the Comforter, the one who brings all things into remembrance that we were taught from the foundation of the world through the prophets, testimonies, and the law. I wanted to provide a short explanation um, and depending on how this thing goes, possibly a uh, one or two or three part series concerning the feast days. And so the title of this message is called Be Dressed and Ready, Reckoning Set Feasts of Yahweh Using Enoch's Calendar. Just about every year that I post the dates on my channel, I'm asked questions about how I got my dates, how do I reckon time. I don't mind explaining to individuals as the questions are brought up, but just about every year I receive the same questions and so I thought that maybe a video explaining my position would help uh, for future reference. There are several ways that you can reckon Yahweh's feast days or reckon his dates. However, his feast days are set. They are set in time. They are on the heavenly tablets from the foundations of the earth, and you cannot move them. They do not change. They are from everlasting to everlasting, and they are assigned between Yah in heaven as well as his hosts and those of us here on earth all the way to kingdom come. And so I'm going to share with you how I reckon in these set feast days, and that's by using Enoch's calendar. So let's get started. I myself and several others reckon the calendar using Enoch's calendar, and some will call this the Enochian calendar that's found in the book of Enoch. This calendar reckons the time using 364 days in a year, four seasons, and three months in a season equaling 90 days, including four intercalated days or heads of the month, 52 weeks, seven days a week. A day begins at evening, and I'll add a day is 24 hours. A little background about how I came into the Emil King calendar. Back in 2019, I was uh, taught a lot of different things about Torah that I never knew about, neither was I taught uh, in the, uh, the ministry that I was in prior. And one of those things that I was taught, which uh, had great heavy weight on my walk um, from that point forward, is the calendar, how to keep his feast days and what time to keep his feast days. This diagram is drawn out in a circle and Enoch's calendar has to be mapped out this way. Now, there are several um, other elements to his calendar that are uh, stated in the book of Enoch, but I won't go too much into that right now. But as you see here, we have 364 days in the middle, four seasons, starting with spring, following summer, going to autumn and winter being the last. And if you can see around here, it has spring having 30 days, mid spring, 30 days, late spring. And then there is this middle portion which is this four intercalated days or heads of the calendar. I have said in my post from spring to fall, um, a lot of times in my greetings, I will say Hag Sameach Rosh Kodesh. And a lot of people are familiar with that term Rosh Kodesh, meaning New Year. And what a lot of people don't realize with Enoch's calendar, these four intercalated heads of the month means that we actually have four New Year's in a year. I'll explain what I'm saying, but just take me at face value and continue hearing me out. We know that our new year begins in the spring with the month of Nisan, also known as Aviv, which is the spring season. That has one head of the month, which is inside of its uh, season. But also as you go about the seasons from summer fall or autumn and winter, each of these four months have a new year, which is called a Rosh Kodesh or a head of the month. Okay. 
So when I say, especially for the fall feast that we're falling in right now, some would call it Rosh Hashanah, that is a new year. No, it's not the beginning of our year that falls in March, but it is a new year in fall, symbolizing a new season, especially with our high holy days with Yom Torah, Yom Kippur, and Sukkot. So hang in there with me. I'll explain more. I have a lot more slides here to explain my position, as well as some questions from you all in the comment section uh, that I felt would be very edifying for others to perhaps hear the question and also reason my answer concerning that question. So let's continue. So I don't want to take for granted anyone who does not know who Enoch is when I say the Enoch calendar. I have some bullet points here just to prove who the Bible says Enoch is and why he's so important to understanding the calendar or the set feasts of Yahweh. Bullet point number one, Enoch is a biblical figure, a patriarch in the antediluvian period, or as some know, um, before the flood. He is the son of Jared, the father of Methuselah, and the grandfather of Lamech, who is the father of of Noah. Anyone who's familiar with the Torah, you will know um, the lineage from Adam all the way down to Yehoshua. And Jared is right in there with Noah and also Enoch. So he's very important in the timeline. Bullet point number two, Enoch obeyed Yahweh and taught the people with power. He taught about Yehoshua HaMashiach, repentance, baptism, and the Holy Spirit. And all of this is uh, chronicled in the book of Enoch. I've read the book of Enoch. It's a very complex book. A lot of what's in there, you have to map out in order to understand it. And so some regard Enoch as a prophet, somebody very important. And Yah obviously had a lot of um, favor on him to reveal to him the mysteries of heaven and also the end times. So Enoch is very, very, very relevant to this conversation. And he's referenced in the Torah as well as the New Testament to give two witnesses uh, or two biblical accounts to who this person is, starting with Genesis chapter 5, verse 21. Enoch lived 65 years, then became the father of Methuselah. After Methuselah's birth, Enoch walked with Elohim for 300 years and became the father of more sons and daughters. All the days of Enoch were 365 years. Enoch walked with Elohim and he was not found for Elohim took him. So anybody who's familiar with Enoch, we know that he did not die a natural death. He did not die from old age. He didn't die from disease or any of that. He was what some would call translated or taking up to Yah. And this is uh, stated in Hebrews chapter 11, verse five. By faith, Enoch was taken away so that he wouldn't see death and he was not found because Elohim translated him, for he has had testimony given to him that before his translation, he had been well-pleasing to Elohim. Enoch pleased Yah. He wanted to do what was pleasing to him. He sought out answers from Yah direct, and Yah answered him through angels, through archangels. So when the book is saying that, it, that Yah took him away, that means that there is a purpose that he has for him in that life that he lived on the earth as well as in the future. Some believe that one of the two witnesses is Enoch. Enoch blessed his son Methuselah with the mysteries of heaven through the book and also blessed uh, the descendants thereafter with knowledge and understanding of things like the calendar as well as end time prophecy. So let's end with verse six. Without faith, it is impossible to be well-pleasing to him. For he who comes to Elohim must believe that he exists and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. And that's a principle in Torah. You cannot do the law if you do not believe that Yahweh is still living and he's still breathing and everything that he set forth for us to do from the beginning is still relevant today. That's one of the reasons why he says that the covenant and these feast days we're supposed to do perpetually from generation to generation. It's a sign that we believe in him, that we trust in his word, and that we want his wisdom and his providence in the time to come. And so without faith, we cannot keep 
these calendars. We can't keep these feast days. My testimony is that I kept the Enoch calendar through faith. I had very little understanding about how to calculate it. And my mind wasn't prepared to calculate the calendar in the very beginning, 2019. I had other things that um, I wanted to learn about as far as how to keep the commandments, what a Shabbat means, how to keep it, things like that. And after a while, through obedience, through inquiry, through uh, keeping these feast days from year to year, that's when the questions surfaced. That's when the, my mind was clear to understand um, these concepts. And I'm able to share it with you right now. And so I'm not saying that I know everything about Enoch's calendar. I'm not saying that I'm a scholar or an expert in these things. But as far as the basics are concerned, I understand it enough so that I can do it without any help, as well as teach my child and anyone else who is looking for some guidance. So hallelujah for that. As the word says, he's a rewarder to those who diligently seek him. And I thank you to have understanding on this matter. Let's continue. All feast days are in October. So I want to give a shout out to these two um, followers of mine. They gave me some questions that were thought provoking enough for me to create this video. I want to use their comments as the dialogue was going forward in the community section of this calendar that I posted recently. And perhaps other people have these types of questions. I want to be able to share my answer. So both of these commenters shared that the fall feasts, as far as what they have seen, are in October. To the left here, I posted um, the dates starting from September 4th, which is today. Depending on when I post this video, it may be past, right? But it is actually today, Wednesday, September 4th. And so I have mapped out the high holy days of Tishri or on the Gregorian calendar, September, also known on the Hebrew calendar as 1 Tishri. I'll explain that a little later, but just so you know the position, I will give context, I will give scripture, all of the above so that we can all follow along. The first commenter says, Peace, Sister Norwood. May I ask why your feast days are different than the status quo? I'm not challenging you at all, just wondering. Everywhere else I look says the feast days are in October. And we're going to look at some of these dates and see if that's something that can be verified. Another commenter says, I prayed, read scripture, and see here too, Sister Norwood. October has shown up in these sources. Are these false? If so, can you tell me how so I may not be led astray again? Obviously, the question is relevant, right? October has shown up in these sources. Are these sources false? This commenter here provided some sources that we're actually going to go into, not all of them, but we're going to go into some of them just to uh, seek out the truth of the matter and explain how I reckoned my fall feast days beginning in the month of September. So let's go into it. This is a matter of salvation. And so that's why I wanted to take my time to uh, to make this conversation broader. You have some leaders out there who teach that the feast days are not salvific and they are teaching sin. The Ten Commandments is only the tip of the iceberg concerning Yah's covenant to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. In the covenant is also keeping the holy feast days of Yahweh. That's our appointment times. They're set in the heavens above and they're given to man, to us, in order to memorialize all that Yahweh has done and what he will do in the end. And so this is a blueprint from the time of the Exodus all the way to the end of Sukkot. This is the plan for our salvation and what Yah has already done for Israel. And every time that we backslid, every time that we uh, was led astray from the covenant, we had to relearn how to keep these feast days. You know, there's a lot of people who excuse not keeping the feast days because they're in their land of captivity. So how do you explain the Exodus? How do you explain that, how, that they kept the Passover meal as well as the first day of unleavened bread in their land of captivity. How do you explain that to that excuse? It's a contradiction. We can and we will and we should keep Yahweh's feast no matter where we are until we come up 
to Jerusalem or come up to the place that Yahweh has put his name in order to offer up our offerings to Yah, praise him and keep a feast to him like we did in the wilderness. And all of this is done through the son, Yah Yehoshua. So there's three sources here that um, the young lady provided. I'm actually going to go through one, but at your own time, I want you to take a look at these sources um, so that you can follow along with me. And perhaps you can also um, learn to calculate their feast days with the dates of Enoch's calendar. This is for educational purposes and to help us come to another level of understanding for ourselves so that we are not uh, leaning too far into someone else's interpretation of how to count the calendar. So I guess it would be appropriate to say fair use, fair use. All right. So the question still stands. Fall feast days are in October. So here I have four calendars, um, all labeled one through four. The first one from one of the, those sources, the Passover was April 22nd, all the way down to the eighth day, beginning October 24th. As far as my understanding, there is not one calendar for all. Um, the rabbis from old as well as those of the present, um, they'll tell you that they keep different calendars, some of them very far away from each other, some of them uh, maybe even a day close to each other. So their dates for Feast of Trumpets begins October 3rd. And then we have another calendar sharing that the Feast of Trumpets begins October 2nd. If you look up Jewish holidays from Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Sukkot, all seven days, and ending with Shemini Etzeret, which is the eighth day of Sukkot, you will see that there is a date range uh, between September and October. And there's a reason for that. And it's how you reckon time. A lot of times when I'm asked these questions about how I got my dates, because you know, you're searching online and you see other dates. My question is mostly always, how does that website or that source reckon or calculate their dates? You know, this, the status quo, as, as it was quoted, um, is not what we follow. Yas people are peculiar. We are small in number. We don't go with the majority on things. If you look at ministries online, they teach the calendar one way, or they teach how to calculate the calendar one way. You may even have a congregation that doesn't teach it at all. They just provide the dates and they say, this is how we're doing it. That's where faith comes in. If you are keeping the feast of Yahweh, then hallelujah, may Yah grant you favor to understand the purpose of them, number one, and number two, how to calculate them. And if you're in a ministry, and this is of, this is my belief and my opinion, if you're in a ministry for so many years and they still haven't provided you understanding or clarity or an explanation on how to calculate a calendar, then one would have to question, how does this ministry get their calendar? Do they follow the majority? Do they follow the status quo? And I'm not saying it's wrong to do that. But what I am saying is all of these calendars are not reckoned using the 364 days a year, 52 weeks, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so that's how we can determine whether or not, according to Enoch's calendar, if someone's calendar is false or true. So that's established. The fall feast days is ranged between September and October. And guess what? That's actually the last day of Feast of Trumpets on the Enoch calendar. Let's continue. So I want to visit this source here. Um, I found this source that was provided pretty interesting. On face value, I'm just going to read, on the Hebrew biblical calendar, a day begins and ends at dusk. See Genesis 1. Accordingly, each of these feast days begins and ends at sundown. That's correct. A day, according to Genesis chapter 1, begins at evening. So I want to uh, go here to this website and I want to take a look around a little bit and stack up some of the things that it's saying next to the testimony of Enoch. All right, so here we are, fair use. Again, this is just for educational purposes and to edify um, my followers concerning the calendar. So uh, we have here on the website, it is detailing the 2024 feasts and new moon dates. And now again, I've said that one of the things that we go wrong in calculating 
the calendar is following the moon, the actual luminary moon in the sky. I wanted to read this here because like I said, where we go wrong is following the moon. Now, I hope to go into a little later, Yah willing, in another video, this term, new moon, also known as Rosh Kodesh. They have it here, Rosh Kodesh. In the Hebrew, Rosh Chodesh is explained as head of the month, head of the month. Also, head of the month is interchanged with new month. That's where a lot of us go wrong. So that's where you have people going out on their porch and looking at the moon as opposed to calculating when the head of the month begins. So here they have an asterisk, a note that says these dates are taken from a calendar synchronized to start each Hebrew month on the new moon, as it would be seen from the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. Now, I, I just want to put on your mind, you know, for those of us who are spread into the four corners of the earth, America, um, Africa, even some of us who are here in the Middle East, uh, you know, who are right around the corner from Jerusalem, but not there. Um there's a couple of things that I find difficult with this. Um, you're basically telling someone that they have to be in the land and uh, how would I say it? an astronomer in order to determine when Yah's new month has started. And all of this is by looking at the moon. This new moon is calculated using lunar phase software that can pinpoint the moon's position and phase at any time from any latitude, longitude on the earth. So again, you have to be someone very skilled and you, you would have to also follow someone who's very skilled. Let's say that you don't, you're not, you're not equipped. Let's say that that's just too burdensome for you to go outside and watch the moon. So you're dependent on somebody to tell you when Rosh Kodesh or the head of the month begins based on their logic to go outside and watch the moon. In the time of, of Noah, Abraham, etc., they did not have software. They didn't even regard the luminaries, honestly. What they did was they reckoned the time using math. They reckoned the time using the seasons. They go on to say, in some cases, they do not match the dates determined by Jewish rabbis because a lot of them don't agree. And so just to put that out there, it's no different than those of us who are in this on in this community of people. We are not all going to agree on a calendar. And that's because of different doctrines. Some people calculate them differently. But if you keep a calendar in faith, prayerfully, Yah will bring you to a higher understanding on how to get those calculations. There are other correct ways to reckon the calendar. I'm getting ready to show you one way that we reckon Yah's appointed feast dates. And I'm going to do my best. I'm going to do my very best to explain it because, uh, you know, the way that I was taught it, you have to sit down with your teacher and that your teacher has to map it out. You have to have a piece of paper. You have to have a pen. You have to have the Bible. You have to be able to read the creation story, as it says here in Genesis 1. You have to be able to map this thing out in order to see how Yah tells us to reckon these times. And so in this one, I really want this video to be less than an hour and a half. Prayerfully, I can go into another one and go into more detail. But let's do this. Just to show you all how to mathematically reckon the dates according to the Enoch calendar, 364 days, right? 52 weeks. Let's on face value reckon these dates using a simple date calculator. Here I have a source, my source number three, that provides the upcoming um, dates for Sukkot for the month, uh, I'm sorry, for the year of 2025 and 2026. Let's put them in. We have Sunday, October 6th, 2025 is when the first day of Sukkot begins. And then in 2026, they have the first day of Sukkot in September 25th. So let's go to this date calculator and let's calculate how many days in a year that is. This is a date cal calculator. I'm not even sure how I found this. I just put it in Google and I found the best one that was um, simple enough for me to understand. And boom, now I'm here sharing it with you. So let's put those dates in, shall we? October 6th, 
2025. For them, that's on a Monday. That's another point that we have to address because according to Enoch's calendar, any feast day that begins on a Monday is incorrect. And then we have their feast day beginning September 25th. So remember, according to Enoch's calendar, a year has to equate 364 days and 52 weeks. We'll start with that. All right. So making sure I have the dates. These dates are the first day of Sukkot for the year 2025 and 2026, according to the third resource site of dates for the fall feast calendars. Let's calculate it. All right, so we have a discrepancy here already. If the first day of Sukkot begins on a Monday in 2025 and it begins on a Friday in 2026, we are way off. I could already determine that before I put the dates in the calculator and got these numbers because the days are already off. Okay, um, just so I can give it away to you now and I'll explain further. All of Yah's Rosh Chodeshim, which are heads of the month, should begin on a Wednesday. That is in correlation to the creation story. I'll go more into that, but just take me at face value. All heads of the month are supposed to begin on a Wednesday. And on the Hebrew calendar, that is called the fourth day. That is called the fourth day, also known as Yom Revi'i, the fourth day. If you look in Genesis chapter one, when the luminaries were created, the sun and the moon for days, months, and seasons, that was listed in Genesis and it began on the fourth day of creation. That's my quick answer. So not only are these days, according to Enoch's calendar, wrong or incorrect, the equation of, of a full year is nowhere in here, given these dates. October 6th, 2025 to September 25th, 2026 is approximately 11 months, 19 days, or 50 weeks and 40 days, or 354 calendar days. We're off. We're off by 10 days. So number one, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm well within my number range, right? As far as the points that I'm addressing here, but that's incorrect. So if the dates, let's go back. So if the dates range between these months, we have to find out which month is accurate. Is it September or is it October? And on my community post in the last few years, I've actually shared my calendar. So what we're getting ready to do so this video doesn't get any longer, we're going to go to that and we're going to calculate my dates and see if they match up. Let's do that. All right. So here we have. September 2023, this was last year's fall feast days, and currently the dates for this year's fall feast. So last year, we began Rosh Hashanah, otherwise known as Feast of Trumpets, on Wednesday, the 6th sundown, because a day begins at sunset, and it ends Thursday, the 7th sundown. As you see here, all of the dates that I provided are from evening to evening. And likewise, this year, the day, the first day of trumpets will begin on a Wednesday. And on the Gregorian calendar, it is on the 4th, which is not too far away from last year because we're talking about the first week, right? The fourth day of the first week. And that's on the Gregorian calendar. We're going to go into the scripture where Yah talks about the seventh month on the first day of the seventh month, what what that meant or what that means on a calendar, uh, on a Hebrew calendar. But just take me at face value. The fourth of September is the first of Tishri. This is 2024, the year 2024. Now, I'm not familiar with the years in Hebrew, um, but I do know that um, the Jews use a uh a millennial year to describe what year they're in. Um, I'm not too familiar with that, so I won't touch that. But as far as the days are concerned, last year, 2023, September, the first day of the seventh month 
was on a Wednesday. Same, same. It does not change. So when Yaz talks about set feast days, they are set in stone. They do not shift and change. But what changes it is like the time period we're in where we're using a Gregorian calendar as opposed to Enoch's calendar. And so this is where you have some people who are also, for instance, keeping Feast of Trumpets in July because it says on the seventh month. That's incorrect, right? Because the seventh month in the Hebrew calendar is different from the seventh month on the Gregorian calendar. I mean, I, I, I would say that that's completely off because it's a different season. But if the heart is there to obey, then you do it un until you get to another level of understanding. So let's calculate this. Let's calculate September 23rd, the 6th, and September 4th, um, 2024. Let's do that in the date calculator. All right. So last year, it was September 6th. That was the first day, 2023. And then this is the first day is the 4th. Let's make sure that's correct. That's on a Wednesday this year, and that's on a Wednesday last year. The first day of the seventh month, T3, which is the first day of the fall season. On the Gregorian calendar, that is September. Let's calculate it. All right. So the result is that it's approximately 11 months and 29 days or 52 weeks. There is a familiarity there or 364 calendar days. That in itself is a great explanation on how to get the same dates of the Hebrew calendar every year, no matter um, no matter the dates of the Gregorian calendar. Obviously, there's there's that learning curve, right, where you have to sit down and um, make sure that your dates match up because we're we're dealing with sunset to sunset. But let's go ahead and let's uh, fact check my dates for Shmini Etzeret last year. And let's go ahead and do it for this year. Wednesday, the 27th of last year. And this year it would be Wednesday, the 25th. And that's the first day of the eighth day, as you all see here. And that's from sundown to sundown. So let's go ahead and put that in the calculator. All right, so we're going to, uh, we're still staying in the same month, September, and that's the 27th of last year, 2023, and this year, it is the 25th. Let's make sure that's accurate. Yes, that's on a Wednesday, because just about all of our feast days, or the start of our feast days, um, are on a Wednesday. Um, Yom Kippur is a special event because it is a Shabbat Shabbaton, which means that it's a high holy day on a Shabbat. I'll explain that later. But just about all of our feast days um, start on a Wednesday, uh, with the exception of Yom Kippur, as well as the final day of the counting of the Omer. And I believe one more. I can't really see it right now in my mind, but um, I know what, I, what I'm talking about. So this is on a Wednesday, correct? And this is on a Wednesday, correct? That's correct. Like I said, I can look at somebody's calendar on face value. And if the days are not um, falling in line, then I can already tell that the count is going to be off. So let's calculate this. All right, same, same. It has determined that between the first day of the eighth day last year and the first day of the eighth day this year, it is approximately 11 months, 29 days, or 52 weeks, 364 calendar days. And you can do this for every year after. This is how you can calculate it, every year after. Every year after, you can literally have like a... um like a projector sheet and write out the days 
one, two, three, four, et cetera, et cetera, or right here, one, two, three, four, et cetera, et cetera, and just place it on the following year on the Gregorian calendar for your fall feast days. And this is how we can determine that Enoch's reckoning of a year is correct. I'm aware that there are other that there are other calendars out there and that there are other ways to reckon a calendar year. Spring, summer, fall, winter. This is how we can calculate all of the feast days and be on time in time. All right, to be continued, if you want to hear more, add a comment or question below so it can help me to uh, determine how I'm going to flow with things. If this is something um, that Yah wants to happen during this time. Um, and if this video was helpful to you, like and subscribe. And always, thank you for watching. Shana Tova, Moedim Le Simcha, happy feast day. And enjoy each other in Yah Yehoshua. Make sure that you prepare your, your double portions on these Shabbatones. Although they are in the middle of the week, they are kept as Shabbats. So if you go back to Leviticus chapter 23, the first few verses is explaining Yah Shabbats, how to keep them. That will set the precedence on how you will keep the, um, the beginning and possibly the end of these feast days which is like a Shabbat, even though it's not on a Shabbat. And we know that Yom Kippur on the 13th from the 14th is a day where we refrain from eating and drinking anything. It's a day of fasting to afflict our souls. So may Yah write your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. And may we all repent and turn from our sins and return back to our true love, Yehoshua, the Messiah. Until next time. Thank you for watching. Shana Tovah.